Welcome back everybody. In this video we're going to be looking at a couple of different things. First of all we're going to be looking at fonts and uh, you know how to make a unique UI template um, and also we'll be looking at uh, you know implementing kind of like cutscenes where you know just so we can show off the text a bit better uh, and that'll be very simple. It'll just be you know as you move through triggers then text pops up and I'll show you how I would do that. So let's get right into it. So first things first, I'm here in GIMP, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the ASCII file. So you find this in the Assets folder of your project. You go into UI, and then it's, it's S or ASCII, ASCII. Uh, and if I open that up, we can see what it looks like. And as you can see, it's the font that we see inside GB Studio when we when we play our game. So editing this and updating this will uh, will make us have a new font in GB Studio. What I also want to point out is the background is white and the text is black. If I open up the frame, you see this frame? If I add the grid, so you see the 8x8 grid is now on. You can see that it has four corners. If you know how the Game Boy works, you can probably imagine that this tile here scales, or not scales, like duplicates and copies itself uh, one after another. I depending on how big the you know the line of text is. Uh, this square here is basically what happens when you... I think it's what happens when you have a space. Uh, I'm not exactly sure, but you have to keep in mind that if the background of the text is white, then this should be white as well. It doesn't have to be, but it's just so that the text looks like it's on top of the background. I'll also open the cursor, and the cursor is just like the... Uh, the text in the fact that it sits on the colored background and it would be in this slot here so that when you're in the menu in GB Studio it goes up and down between uh, you know these tiles to for you to choose what it is so it's the UI's uh, like cursor basically uh, so keeping that in mind what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how I would make the text white and then also make it a bit more bolder um, and I'll also update the frame and the cursor to match the font, basically. And I'm just going to select all the black color uh, on the ASCII layer. And I'm going to cut it out and I'm going to paste it back down. Uh, now we can see if I hide the background, then we just have the white text, I mean the black text. And what I want to do is make it white. So I'm going to select it all again and I'm going to choose white. I'm going to make the brush size bigger and then I'm going to paint it all in. And now you can see the text is white. But if we show the background again, we can't see the text. So I'm going to go back to the underneath, make it all black, and now you can see the text. Uh, I might... Okay, what I'm going to do is turn on the grid now. I'm going to make it an 8x8 grid so you can see how it looks. I'm also going to make the background uh, dark green for now so we can see the, the tiles better. Uh, and what this does is let us edit the text, basically. So if you see here, if I make this thicker, then when we export it into GB Studio, it will be thicker. Okay, so now I've made all the capital letters bold. Um, the background is now black. I can now export it and overwrite it as what it was before. Now if we go back into our project, if we hover over the text, we can see now that it, it has the text is white and the background is black and you can see how the frame is is not really uh, you know cohesive with it so that'll be my next job okay so I've just made the background black of this I've just highlighted this uh, all in white uh, I've over I've overwritten it so now if we hop back into GB studio we can see that it now if we hover over this it has the background is black just like the text the outline is nice and clean uh, we've obviously the the lowercase font is still the same, but we've made the capitals uh, bold. Uh, so we're definitely moving forward, and we just need to remember now that the the cursor has the same um, issue with the black background. So gonna make it black, and what I'm gonna do is just have an arrow, just to simplify it. Yeah, simple as just a little arrow. Let's export it to the. Okay, I've overwritten it, and then if we go back in, obviously 
when we press play and look on the uh, game, then we will see uh, what it looks like. Okay, so if we go up to this sign, where would you like to fast travel to? And you see now we have our cursor, which is this thing that moves up and down. Uh, the, we have a black background, white text, and it was as simple as that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to string together some cutscenes so we can show off our new font. So first things first, what we need to do is remember how our scene was set up. Um, and if you see here, it's all on the initiate. So if I push event group, then we can put all of this into this group here. And we can easily copy this and then paste it in these new scenes that we made in the last episode. Uh, so then we have the, uh, you know, the right stuff going on. We also want to remember that we have the on on player hit group free from the cat. Um, so we just need to copy that and put it into each of the scenes on player hit group free as well. And then also we can take the heart from up the top. Let's check if what's on here. Just the heart update. Fantastic. So we take the heart. Copy it and paste it around. And we also want to make sure that we update these um, values here so that we respawn in the correct location. So on the update uh, of the heart, if you scroll down to the if uh, value of hearts is equal to zero, so if we're basically dead, then uh, we change the scene and we have to make sure we change the scene to the correct one. So I'm changing it to forest. Um, I'll just move it to this top corner here, I guess. And then you want to do the same thing with each of these. So I put the town one. See where that goes. It looks good. And the beach one. And this will make sure that when we die, we respawn in the correct locations. Okay, I'm also going to copy over some cats so that we have something to hit with. Uh, I'll put them in the town, I think. I think the my idea is the, the forest is the intro. Maybe we'll have one cat here. That would be a good idea. Um, and then we have the town, in which the, the idea is the cats are the problem. And then we have a beach area. Uh, where we'll go into this dungeon thing to end the game, I think. So we now have the basically the most of this setup. We need to remember that we start in the forest scene now. So I'm going to click on nothing, just click on the outside, and uh, set the starting scene to forest. Move this around. I'm going to put it where we spawn when we die. And now what I'm going to do is just add the collision. So I'm just taking the red box and I'm just painting it around so that we have collision. And I'll do this with all three of the scenes. Okay, so I've just painted in all the collision. As you can see, it's just a ring around the outside of the level. Uh, just because I don't need to fill in all the blank spaces is kind of pointless. I could just press fill, but um, I find it easier just to, it's easier to see the collision on the edge. Um, so there we have the collision. Now I want to do is set up the moving from scene to scene. So what I'm going to do is just get a trigger, put it on this edge here, make sure it's the right dimensions, and I'm just going to put change scene. And as simple as that, we can drag this into here. Uh, and now we can see that we move from this scene to this scene. So when, we, when our player character hits this, we then come into this scene. Uh, and I'm not going to make it so they can go back, just so that the story and everything kind of like pushes the player forward but you can easily do that in your games if you want so the same thing here change scene and then i just put it here i'm gonna make the player face that direction when they come in simple as so now we have a scene where we start here and we go through into this scene and then we come into the scene let's press play and test that out just in case there's any glaring issues okay so here's a little night guy we're in the forest area. There's a cat. I can still hit it. So let's go into the other area. 
And there's all the cats attacking. And all the cats are gone. You can move into this scene. And that's basically it. Test the collision. Yep. Obviously I haven't made it so there's an end yet. So that's how you'd basically obviously set up your scene to move from um, you know, location to location. And now what I want to do is add a little bit of story. So we're going to show off our UI by adding some text. It's going to be very simple. I'm just going to have a trigger box here. Uh, it will have a local variable. Um, actually, I'll keep it simple for now and just say um, your mission is to find the source of the evil cat. So you see here as we have over it, it shows us what it will say and what it looks like. And that's fine. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a variable. So I'm just going to have a math function. I'm going to set the true. It's going to be local zero. Uh, and what this will do is, so once it's been said, it's been said, and I can have it now a thing saying if false. So we can disable the else, and what this will do is if the local zero is false and all um, variables are false until they're changed. Um, so if local zero is false, which at the start of the game it will be, it says your mission is to find the source of the evil cats dot dot dot, and then it sets uh, the local zero to true. So if we were to walk back into it or back for it, or actually as the player moves through, they will hit the trigger multiple times because uh, the player is two tiles wide. Uh, then as they hit it, it's, it, it won't do anything because it's already been set to true. Uh, and this means that the text will only come up once. Uh, and local values only work in each object or thing. So in the scene, it has its own local variables. The trigger has its own local variables. Each actor has its own local variables. Each trigger has its own local variables. So you can set, I can just copy this into a different scene basically. And it won't, it won't already be true because it's a local variable at every scene basically resets every local variable. So we can put one here saying something like the cats have overran the city obviously isn't really a city um but uh it doesn't really matter i'm not sure what overran is spelled like that but uh let's just keep it so the player comes through here they they uh are told there's a you know evil cats they come here and find the city is overrun with them and then when they come here what i want them to say is uh actually i'm gonna have it here so when the player, you know, explores around, they they get closer to the uh, cave, and then it says, "Some say the cats hide in the deep, dark cave." And then I'm going to have another trigger that when they go into it, it then I think fade out. Uh, so that will mean that will mean it fades out. So like it's like the end of the game. You know what I mean? Like, um, like this is just the end of our little, basically like a tech demo. You could kind of say, right? So the player spawns. They uh, get some uh, information about the game and the story. They kill a cat or they destroy the evil cat. Uh, then they come into the city or the town and they find that there's loads of cats here. And then they're they are prompted to enter the cave uh, to find the the deepest, darkest mysteries. So if we press save, we can test it out. Okay, so we're in the forest. Let's walk around a bit, see what we can do. Your mission is to find the source of the evil cat. Fantastic. But obviously, if we want, we can... 
Okay, so I just found... I was trying to see if the uh, there was something wrong. And we can see that the cats hitting us didn't change our, our hearts. So what I'm going to do is... Just quickly check to see if there's a problem there. It's interesting because we still... Um, you know, we still lost our hearts and changed the scene. So what I think the issue is, is that the set animation frame needs to be set exactly to hearts. Uh, and that's because I found there's a bug with uh, copy and pasting and the self uh, value. You need to just change it to the correct thing, basically. I might have to do that with every single one. Okay, so let's test this out. Even if it doesn't work, I'll go through to the end and uh, we can see the fruits of our labors. So, okay, yeah, so that worked. That uh, Fixing that bug there of, um, you know, the self uh, animation frame thing, but setting it to the heart just fixed it. It was a simple issue. Okay, so obviously we've made it so when we initiate a scene, we have full hearts again. And you might want to change that. You might want not want to let that happen. Uh, but that's how this currently works. Uh, you can move around nicely. I'll just go through the next section. So if you get close to the cave, some say the cats hide in the deep dark cave. And then you see this is an extremely slow fade. Uh, and I think on the actual Game Boy that would be black because there wouldn't be anything on screen. Um, but yeah, that's how you would change your UI. That's how you have cutscenes and triggers. And that's also um, how I fix the, you know, the issue, that bug there with the animation frames. But yeah, uh, this was this idea of the the font and UI tutorial was suggested by one of my Patreons. Uh, thank you to them. They're on screen right now. If this tutorial brought up any questions for you, please leave it in the comments. I try and answer every single one of them. Uh, so like this video if you like this video. Subscribe if you haven't already. Please comment any other ideas you have for tutorials. And I'll see you in the next video.